This video will discuss the concept of annuity due and how to account for lease payments that are due at the beginning of a period with our financial calculators. So let's take a look at a question. Lacey Limited entered into a lease on June 1st, 2020. The lease term is six years and requires annual rental payments of $30,000 at the beginning of each year. The incremental borrowing rate is 8% and the rate implicit in the lease is 9%. Calculate the capitalized amount of the right to use asset if Lacey follows IFRS. Well, there's a really important concept in this question and it's true of all rent for lease payments is the fact that they're due at the beginning of the year. So this due at the beginning of the year means that we need to use our financial calculators differently. So how do our financial calculators know if a lease payment is due at the beginning of the period or at the end of the period, like we saw for bonds where the payments are due at the end of each period? Well, we need to tell our financial calculators that the payments are due at the beginning of the period. And how we do that is by setting begin mode on our financial calculators. And this will tell them our calculators that the payments are due at the beginning of each period. So how do we do that? We can see the steps to do that right here. So let's go ahead and do that. So the steps are, move this so you can see what I'm doing. So I've got my financial calculator here. I'm just gonna clear all my work. And to set it to begin mode, I'm gonna hit the second key right here, which is essentially a shift button. I'm gonna hit second, and then I'm gonna hit payment, which is right here. And you can see above payment with shift, it sets it to begin mode. Then I'm gonna hit second again as a shift key, and I'm gonna hit second enter. And enter will set it. And you can see right now on my financial calculator, I've got this begin mode at the top. And I also need to exit setting mode so I can go back to inputting questions. And to do that, we push second, compute, which is also quit with the shift mode. So again, what I did is I pushed second, which is essentially a shift, second payment right here, which you can see above is begin, second enter to set the mode, and second com compute to quit. And now you can see that on my financial calculator, I have BGN, and what that means is that now my financial calculator knows that the payment for each of the inputs that I put in is gonna be due at the end of the period and not at the, be or sorry, at the beginning of the period and not at the end of the period like we saw for other financial instruments. So you can see that begin mode there. Okay, so let's talk about what this begin mode actually means. So here's a timeline. So we can see that here in this question, the lease is six years. And I've drawn out a timeline here for six years. So if we're talking about an annuity due or a lease payment, we're gonna have six payments, but the payment's due at the beginning of each period. So we're gonna have a payment that's due right here. We're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six. So those are our payments under an annuity due basis. Now, if, if this was a bond or some other financial instrument where the payments were not due at the beginning of the year, we would have had one, two, three, four, five, six payments. So you can see that because this is an annuity due, the timing of this first payment is an entire year different. And that's gonna significantly impact our present value calculation, meaning that it's crucial that we have this begin mode on when the payment's due at the beginning of the period and off when it is not. And let's look at what, that, what impact that has. So let's calculate the present value of this lease. So what inputs do we have? So we know that it's a six year lease. So N is gonna be six. We know that the payment is $30,000 at the beginning of each year. 
and this is a cash outflow, so we're going to put negative 30. And we know that the interest rate for IFRS is always the implicit rate, and the implicit rate is 9%, so we're going to have I as 9%. We're told that Lacey follows IFRS. The future value of this lease is zero because it's a lease. We don't have any future input into it. So if we put compute future compute present value here, and of course making sure that we have our begin mode on, meaning that the payments are due at the beginning of the period, then let's calculate out that present value. So you can see I've got begin mode on. I'm gonna put in six N. I'm gonna put in $30,000 minus for my payment. I'm gonna put in nine I and zero future value. And I'm gonna put compute present value. And I'm gonna get 146,689.54 or $690. So I'm gonna put one, four, six, six, ninety is my present value there. And that is the present value of the lease. That is what we would capitalize for the right to use asset under IFRS. Now, just to illustrate the concept of an annuity due, let's take the beginning mode off of our financial calculators. And to do that, we follow the exact same steps. And it's equally important that you know how to put begin mode on and how to take it off because what if the first question on an exam is a lease and the second question is a bond? You're gonna get one of the two wrong if you don't know how to put begin mode on and off. So to take begin mode off, we do the exact same thing. So I'm gonna hit second, second payment, second enter, second quit. And now look, I don't have begin mode on my calculator anymore. So I'm back into a regular annuity, not an annuity due. So let's see what would have happened in this question if we had calculated the present value of this lease without the begin mode on. So let's put in the exact same inputs. So let's say 6N, 30,000 negative payment, 9I, and zero future value. We're gonna go compute present value, and I'm gonna get a present value of, is gonna be 134,577, or 578, let's round that, okay? And this is no begin mode. Okay, and why would that be? So you can see our present value here is a lot higher than our present value without begin mode. And if we look at this timeline here where we, where we mapped out the payments under the two options, we can get an idea of why. So the present value, there's a lot less deferred payments under the annuity due approach, whereas with the regular annuity, we're deferring this entire payment out one year and our last payment is an entire year later. Meaning that the present value of the approach where we don't make the payment until the end of the year is lower because we've benefited from the time value of money. Whereas here, because we're making the payment at the beginning of each year, our present value is higher because we have to make all the payments earlier. And conceptually that makes sense, but it illustrates the importance of knowing how to use begin mode because you can see that these numbers are dramatically different. This number is correct in this situation. This number would be wrong. I hope that makes sense. And practice using begin mode and make sure you can compute the present value through the rest of the tutorial sections where we will always be using an annuity due approach.